<laughs> Mr. Speaker, um, it's my great privilege to speak on this debate of the final bill in the list of ten bills that we have brought to Parliament. I do so, Mr. Speaker, because I'm a member of Parliament, haven't been elected, Lord Avoca. But I speak today in my capacity as the head of the government of the Bahamas. And I speak as clearly as I can and as seriously as I can so that all and sundry who are ready to hear it in my voice may hear me and may see me on the television. These are very serious times. And as a result of that, the government has taken very serious action. I want to first say, Mr. Speaker, that I, I'm not clear that during the course of the debate, it came across to those persons who are in the business of uh, trafficking drugs and uh, supplying drugs, that when this bill when these bills are passed and come into law, that the minimum sentence that a magistrate can impose is going to be six years in jail if you are found in possession of these items within one mile of a school. Here in New Providence, it is not easy to find a place that is not within one mile of a school. And so therefore, as a practical matter, such persons will go to jail for six calendar years. Not the eight months to the year that the prison has nowadays, but six calendar month years, from January 1st to December 31st. Drugs have become a very prevalent in the society, Mr. Speaker, and it, together with guns, are helping to fuel the crime wave we are experiencing in the society. So I say to those persons who are in that business, we are serious. And no more 12 months, no more fines. It is jail and confiscation of anything that could be found to have been acquired from the proceeds of drugs. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, guns are very prevalent in the society. The Minister of National Security gave a list or information about how many guns the police have found in recent times, and uh, 365, 361, and how many the new magistrates court that deals with gun-related offenses um, have dealt with, and how many are left to be dealt with. It is expected that shortly a second court will be established <coughs> for gun-related crimes, and a second court will be established for drug-related crimes. The reality is that the Bahamas has not been able to try anyone for gun for, for drugs in the Supreme Court for probably 20 years, largely because of uh, a set of facts that existed when the last major drug case was in fact tried in the Supreme Court, which ended in an acquittal. And so for practical purposes, um, the offenses are all tried in the magistrate's court. And so persons with unlicensed firearms <coughs> are asked, are requested, to please turn them in on or before the third day of November. Because if you are convicted after that time for illegal possession, you will go to prison for a minimum of four years, four 
calendar years. Not a fine, not eight months to the year, four long years. And the law has now also been amended to, in, to say that the, the occupier of a vehicle and a boat, private boat, can be presumed to be guilty of the offense unless they can show that they had no knowledge or were not in possession of the item. So no longer just a house, it's also a car and a boat and a plane. It's all of them. Now, <clears throat> very truthfully, Mr. Speaker, lots of people are going to go to jail. That's a reality. Lots of people are going to go to jail as a result of these laws. Those who are in possession of guns, they still have the opportunity to turn them in. And those who are in the business of drugs, get out and get out now. But we are dead serious about this matter. Mr. Speaker, I listened to all of the contributions made by members of the House. Um, I found some of them stimulating. I found some of them quite interesting. Um, I found nothing that changed my mind about any provision in any of the bills. Nothing has been said, Mr. Speaker, that has persuaded us to change anything in any of the bills. So we expect, therefore, to pass the bills as they are. We are engaged today, Mr. Speaker, in discussing a bill that's called the Criminal Evidence Anonymity Bill. For the layman, which is the vast majority of the population of the Bahamas, let me say it very clearly. This is a bill that is going to allow the police and or the Attorney General our staff at the police, to be able to go to a magistrate and obtain permission to keep secret from an accused person the name of a potential witness in a matter being investigated that in certain circumstances, which I shall deal with, it will no longer be required for the police to hand over to a defense witness, a defense lawyer, sorry, a defense lawyer, the statement of a witness with his address, occupation, and his name and all the things he's going to say. But that is no longer going to be necessary under certain circumstances. No, you'll get what they say later on. What they say, what they say. The evidence, the evidence of what they're going to say, you will know. No question about that. I'll come to that. You won't know who's saying it, and where they live. And where their family live, where their children go to school, or anything of the kind. You will know that Jack will, somebody will testify that they saw on this day that member <laughs> commit this particular offense, and here are the facts. And these will be related to serious charges only. Murder, manslaughter, rape, robbery while being armed with a firearm, dangerous drugs, a terrorist act, or when you are trafficking persons. In order to satisfy the requirement, it is going to be necessary for the police 
an investigation to show, firstly, that it's one of those offenses they're dealing with. Secondly, that the witness has reasonable grounds to fear intimidation, to fear being scared, being threatened, mm -hmm. or to fear that he's going to be harmed. or that someone near to him is going to be harmed. That the witness is someone who is able to provide information that is going to assist in the investigation, and uh, the person committing the offense is at least 16 years of age. The general right of a person to know who is accusing him to be able to face that person in court is being curtailed in these instances. <coughs> there are no absolute rights. There are many rights. This was one right that I had never expected that I would have to participate or contemplate how to curtail. I never dreamt this. <coughs> no horror dream I could have had that could have told me I would come to Parliament and say, I want to have an opportunity for a witness to be able to testify against someone and for them not to know who the witness is at all. In my 64 years on this earth, from the time I have memory, I know that the accuser is supposed to face the accused. Look at him, identify him, and say, yes, I saw you do this, or do that, or do the other. But circumstances in my country have changed. Have changed for the worse in relation to criminal activity. And my duty as head of government to ensure peace and order in the Bahamas overrides any personal conviction I could possibly have in relation to the rights that we have known for years and years. This bill is a far-reaching bill. In fact, that is why I suggested that we pull it out of the patch, the, 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 the batch, and deal with it separately and alone as a standby bill. Mm -hmm. And honorable members can disagree about this change we are making. There's nothing that says that we are absolutely right and anybody who opposes it is wrong. I believe that anyone who knew, who knows as much as I know, or nearly as much as I know, is likely to come to the same conclusion I came to. And before I take my seat, I should seek to provide members with some information that can assist them in having a more focused view of why we are doing what we are doing. We are absolutely convinced that this is in the interest of the Bahamas and uh, for the benefit of the people of the Bahamas. This is a special measure of last practical resort. It's been mentioned in Parliament and the newspaper that there was a time when we, while I was head of government, determined that we ought to have minimum sentences 
for gun possession. And that before I left office the last time, in 2002, we changed the law, and I admitted that we had made a mistake. In admitting that we made a mistake, I took account of my own personal views. I don't like minimum mandatory sentences. I don't like saying to a magistrate, you must impose four years for gun possession, irrespective of the circumstances. I don't like it. I do what is absolutely essential. In 2002, 2001, when we passed the law dealing with removing minimum sentences, we had had the greatest success in the history of the Bahamas in a reduction in the number of murders. In the year 2000, we had 74 murders in the Bahamas. And the next year, we had 43, 30 less. We were very comfortable and confident that we had begun on a path that didn't require us to have what are uh, regarded by many as draconian provisions in the law that took away discretion from a magistrate. We are now dealing with 105 murder cases this year. That's two and a half times as many as we had 11 years ago. And there's only 10 months, not quite 10 months of the year going yet. Because these are unusual times, Mr. Speaker, we are undertaking unusual measures. And in doing that, I want to speak to about general citizenry. It is the duty of every citizen to report a crime. That is all of our duty, to report the commission of a crime, to cooperate with the police in the investigation of the commission of a crime, to give evidence in court if we are called upon to do so, to assist the police in execution of their duty. And if it's a serious case that goes to the Supreme Court to serve as a jury man or jury woman <coughs> on the cases, they are our duties. But in order for a citizen to carry out that duty, the citizen must feel safe must feel and indeed know that they're going to be safe, they're not going to be intimidated, they're not going to be threatened, they're not going to be harmed, that their families are going to remain safe, that they're going to be unmolested, <coughs> because they are simply doing their civic duty. Whenever that can't happen, then the citizen is not inclined to cooperate, is unwilling to cooperate. If he's unwilling to cooperate, you are unable to have prosecutions. You then have a state that cannot enforce its laws and protect its citizens from criminal activity. Persons who break the law are required, as a part of the community, to submit to the police if requested to do so. And in fact, if the police seek to arrest you and you wouldn't cooperate, the police is empowered to use whatever force is necessary mm -hmm. to apprehend you. 
They are also empowered to call upon any other citizen to assist them in apprehending you. And the arrested person, and they are arrested, the state requires them to have their rights respected, their human rights. They're not obliged to give the police any information that will incriminate them because they know that if the evidence exists, that they'll be taken before a court and that the court will hear their case and make a determination and they will get a fair trial. And if they are convicted, they'll be sent to prison and they're sent to prison, the state will provide them protection while they're in prison. They also know that even if the police has got sufficient evidence against you and they forced it out of you, beat you up to get it, and you go to court and you're able to adduce before the court <coughs> evidence that the court accepts that you could have your case dismissed and walk free, even if you committed the offense. Because the state does not accept that the police have a right to beat you to extract a statement. And the courts have demonstrated the Bahamas on a number of occasions that that is the case. And persons have walked out of court. In our case, we say that they're not guilty in reality, the case wasn't proven against them. Citizens also have got a right, Mr. Speaker, to sue the government, police. We paid out lots of money from the public treasury Bahamas for excessive use of police power, or abuse of police power. Paid out money for police keeping somebody for far in excess of the 48 hours the law allowed. For arresting someone or a reasonable cost to do so. Because these are citizens, right? They are entitled to do that. But a citizen is required to go when the police call. Our democracy, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> is structured on the basis that we've got an executive, which is the cabinet, we've got the parliament, and they've got the courts. We also have the police, a legal service, which is the office of the attorney general, or the Department of Public Prosecution, and we've got the judiciary. Each of us, have got our own roles to play. We will never succeed if all of us are not doing our part. <coughs> the duty of the executive is to provide all of the resources that are required to ensure that the police force can do its job. Preventing crime, apprehending criminals, being able to pro apprehend them criminals, being able to prosecute them, <coughs> process them, and when necessary, sh and charge them. The law officers of the Office of the Attorney General, their duty is to make sure that the police is acting within the law and that the cases are prepared for presentation to court <coughs> or to be heard by a judge. And the judge is there to hear the case and make the determination in the serious cases um, for there to be a jury. Whenever any one of these is not working well, you have what we've got now. Backlogs, dysfunction, and uh, cases upon cases that have not been tried. Now we can blame whoever we wish. I assert from the executive point of view that every resource requested of us 
by judiciary, by the police, by the legal department, are being provided within the ambit of our resources in the Bahamas. If everybody can make that same claim, including judiciary, we'd be well on our way. If every man who is responsible could make that same claim that they were doing their duty. Doing it effectively, proficiently, timely. We are making available to the judiciary resources to have two Supreme Courts in Nassau and one in Grand Bahama whose only duty will be to deal with criminal cases coming before them. Criminal cases of events that took place last year, 2010, and this year, 2011. That's all. No other case at all. This last year cases and this year's cases. We believe that those courts can dispose of matters before them in under three years. And if they can't, we expect that they will grant bail to accused persons. But we think that that is an adequate number of courts resourced for the judiciary. Now, there have been some suggestions that it may be our cases are not sufficiently prepared when they get to trial. We are taking steps to deal with that, have taken steps to deal with that. We'll take further steps to deal with that. There's also a suggestion that, well, you have too many junior counsels going on to prosecute. Well, the Office of the Attorney General will be empowered to hire private lawyers who are senior and others to prosecute cases. Every resource that's required will be made available. And all we expect is for all sides, including the judiciary, to do our job. <clears throat> no favors. Nothing special. Just our job. That's all we ask. Now, Mr. Speaker, why do I think we ought to do this bill? I'm going to give you a list. And I'm going to take my seat shortly thereafter of the extent of witness intimidation in the Bahamas. Um, the Tribune has a story this morning in it, on the front page. It says, Murder Got the Wrong Man. I know the police have not confirmed the story. But this is what I want to say. It is my information that the man they were looking for is a witness in a murder case. That they tried to kill him before. This is the second attempt to kill this man. And they killed the wrong man. How many others of these cases have happened since 2011 that are ongoing right now? <clears throat> I've got before me now I have 19 cases before me. Case one, person murdered, who was a witness. While waiting for the hearing to take place, murdered. Case two, an attempted murder case. Person threatened with death. Third one, murder. The person's being threatened to be killed regularly. The fourth one, murder charge attempted murder on the life of the witness. All 
of these people have to be provided with assistance from the state and resources. So instead, the police try to apprehend criminals. They've got to find policemen to baby mind people who are testifying about crimes. These people have got families. They got friends. They all know it. So how comfortable are they going to be in coming forward to testify when they see something and they know what is happening to Mary and Jane and Jack? The fact that we've got 50, 55 of the murder cases so far this year, people charged for, it's not accidental. In my view, there are many more people who know many more things. And there are a number of people who are intimidated to speak. We are today providing the means for the intimidated, the fearful, to step forward and come forward and provide information on the basis that your identity will be kept secret and confidential. Yes. And you can feel comfortable that that murderer Jack ain't and know it's you who gave the information. That's the first four. I go to the next 15. These are not going on now. I'm not talking about two years ago, five years ago, six years ago. I'm talking about now. Today. Murder case, number one. Witness of the murder case. Shot and is paralyzed. And all these are shot because of their being a witness. No other, no other evidence or suggestion of any altercation or anything at all. Shot and paralyzed. Paralyzed. <coughs> Number two, murder, death threats. The third one, witness was actually attacked by the accused. Five, six, seven, eight, all intimidation. Ten, witness shot. Twelve, attempt on the witness life. Thirteen, attempt on the witness life. Attempted murder, witness shot on two separate occasions. And this goes on. Mr. Speaker, our democracy, our way of life, our livelihood is threatened by this criminal class in the Bahamas. We are forced to use the power of the state. Not the power of the government, of the state of the Bahamas. The full power of the state of the Bahamas we are forced to use to fight and to conquer these criminals. On this occasion, on this day, this is the medicine we, de we deem adequate to deal with this event this criminal activity. On this day, this is the medicine we deem appropriate. We think it's going to have the desired effect on the society. We are convinced that it is constitutional. If the measures that we are doing today are not, do not result in a significant change, we will increase the dosage. <laughs> we will increase the dosage. Get the patient better. And we will put in place even sterner measures. We are convinced that we are satisfied that these measures will co pass constitutional measure. In the unlikely event, they do not. In the unlikely event, these measures do not pass constitutional muster. We will. As was said when Paul appeared before Agrippa and Felix, he said, I'm going to appeal to Caesar. In our case, Caesar 
is the public of the Bahamas. I still move, Mr. Speaker. <laughs>